Right, so this is the recent interview with Laura Woods. Um, AJ definitely likes her, which is good. A lot of people are saying, oh, they're proper flirtatious and stuff like that. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I don't know. I think AJ's like, he's got a wife, isn't he, and stuff like that. You never see her in the media or anything. But, you know, I don't think there's any of that going on. But who knows? Everyone's uh, going on about it. But I just think she's... Uh, a pleasure to be around in terms of interview and I, I would argue she's a little bit manipulative because she does I don't wouldn't say she's flirtatious but she she brings out character in in her interviewee so to speak by making them relax making it you know nonchalant etc so it's good basically so yeah I just thought I'd make a quick video on this in this interview um AJ interestingly says that he won't ever be undisputed again. Um, I've seen someone else point this out, and they were saying that um, basically he's wrote it off, which is a bit of a shame, because there's no reason why he couldn't, although I tend to agree with Joshua that realistically it's probably never going to happen, because after Fury and Usyk, the IBF's going to be stripped from him, most likely. It's not 100%. I mean, it is pretty much signed, sealed and delivered. But honestly, you just never know. You never know. Um, the other belts, I don't think, are going to be taken away so quickly. Because the point being is they've got a rematch clause. But how do we know that they're going to fight? You, you know, Fury might just give up. You never know with him, do you? He might just quit on the stall and just be like, this is me done. And then you won't see him till he's faulty. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, in this, so basically he does point, he does say that, that um, he won't be undisputed because it'll be too hard to get the belts again um, because one of them, you know, basically what what he's saying is that Usyk will either have all, uh, the free belts, but then it'll go to the mandatory and then one of, I don't know, one of them will be taken away. It'll just be hard work. So it's probably not going to happen. He said it takes around five years to gather belts. And he's 34 now, I believe. I mean, or six years, he said, whatever it is. Um, yeah, so I tend to agree, probably off the cards. But let's hope he gets... Um, it would be nice to see him third world title holder again, third world champion, which is what he's going for, basically. So that's what he says, you know, that's what my aim is. That's what I want to go for. Um, and then basically puts down Fury. And that's why we're here. So, uh, you know, it, it's, it's brilliant, actually. And uh, this is why I think Joshua is making a turnaround. I think he's starting to... I don't know. I might be completely wrong. He might come out and throw a wobbler, like he did against Usyk when he, at the end, when he come out with some... What's hap I don't know what's happening in Ukraine. I mean, come on, Joshua. That was awful. That was the worst thing you could possibly say. It was just the whole experience. I felt embarrassed. I went and hid in a room because I was embarrassed that much. You know what I mean? But yeah, let's have a listen to what um, what aspires in this interview. I've only taken a little clip. It's... I think any... any go on. What happens if Joseph Parker be beats Dion Barada? <sighs> let's go. I, I'll still fight Wilder. Yeah. Let's not take our eyes off the prize. But also, you know what it is as well? It's all fun. But I want to become three-time heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah, so there you go. He he definitely fight Wilder. So now that's been put down for uh, the third, I believe. So we can have a look now just to make sure. Um, so Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder have agreed to deal um, on the 9th of March in uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So it's six years overdue. Now, I get the impression that this fight is happening because, you know, Deontay Wilder's older than AJ. I think, personally, this is them starting to wrap up their career. They're starting to cash out. They're taking the big gambles. They never took these gambles before because they were still youngish and had more, you know, more draw. And essentially, if they didn't fight each other, it was better for them really, because they could get more fights. You know, I think once, um, let's just say AJ fought Fury, after that, it would kind of be a bit dull because you'd be like, well, he's beat that. There's not really much left in the heavyweight uh, uh, weight class for us to watch now. 
do you know what I mean? So I get the feeling that now they're just like, um, you know, cashing out and, and making and getting these big ones in because that was probably always the plan, if I'm honest with you. Um, so, yeah. So the other point I wanted to make was the Fury is uh, fighting to, on the 17th of February. Now, I can't see... Um, not unless there's an ego trip going on here and they wouldn't want to fight uh, the undercard of Fury and Usyk. Um, maybe AJ just it is too bitter to do that. Um, I just don't see why they would do two separate events. Mind you, yeah, it kind of makes sense, don't it? Yeah, of course it does. Why am I even saying that? AJ and Wilder will be a huge, huge draw. It might even be as big as Fury verse. Uh, it might even be... No, I... I don't know, it could be bigger. I mean, AJ's probably got more fans than Fury, and um, Wilder's probably got more the American fans in uh, America, obviously, than Usyk. So possibly, yeah, it's a huge draw. So actually, yeah, I'm completely stupid saying that, yeah. I was just wondering why they would have them so close together, but it's obvious. They're massive draws. And the money, loads and loads of money. That's my main focus, and Wallen's also um, fighting for the mandatory position to fight for the IBF as well. So if I can beat Wallen, God willing, it works out, then that puts me in position to fight for the mandatory where I can then compete for the title. Yeah, which is what he was saying, yeah. So, yeah, he's... Um, I've already explained that, really, but, yeah, he just explained it again. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but, I, don't I don't know. Oh, just, sometimes I think, should I just rip into this geezer and just call him... So let me just explain it. In the interview, she says, if I give you a, a fighter's name, can you give me one word, basically? And uh, Name one the sun, or should I just leave him? All of your media team right now, are probably, their heart rate is I don't mind about the media team. going right through their mouths. I don't mind. Okay. And I, I like that. I don't mind about the media team. Um, hopefully that was genuine and he doesn't give a flying crap about his media team now. That's what I want from Joshua. I want... I want Joshua. I've never liked Joshua, but I respect him a lot. I don't like his fighting style. I find it, find it boring and stiff. Now, everyone argues and says, oh, well, you know, I'd love to be stiff and be 15 world, 15th world champion. I know he's not. He's second time world champion, but you know what I mean. Like, you know, all the all the um, people that are massively into him. Look, I don't, it's not like I, dis, I don't dislike AJ. I did find the Ukraine thing... Silly, I think the racial stuff that he said in the past, I think was just not his place. Like, just stay out of it, mate. You've kept your nose clean for so long. Why tarnish it? But but actually, I would rather, uh, out of it all, I'd rather actually see AJ as a genuine ego dropped. And what I mean by ego dropped, I don't mean like, um, like he's got a big ego. I mean, uh, when you're putting on this show, yeah, this because Joshua has to. He puts on this show. He's the front man for Gillette or whatever it is. He's this advertiser friendly um, boxer, isn't he? Um, and I just want to see him drop all that and just say, do you know what? This is me. I, I, uh, people that are genuine, I prize more over than people that are not genuine, which most people do, obviously. But. You know, I'd rather him, even if he looks silly, I'd rather it be genuine than come out with these little random parts where it just, if you was just like that all the time, I'd respect you more. Do you see what I mean? But maybe that's just me. Okay. This one word. One, one, go on. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. One word for Fury. Diva. D to be honest, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't. I mean, I love Fury. I love his style. I mean, boxing is far better, far better entertaining than Joshua. Far better mover. Um, not as powerful, probably, but certainly better counter punching. Well, I don't know. Joshua's quite good at counter punching, but I mean, Fury's just an all round pure boxer. Um, AJ's, I'm not really sure what AJ you would class him as. He's just so robotic like and he and you know and he's just a false isn't he? he's a huge false um but yeah i mean fury is certainly acting like a diva these days i mean everything about him just i mean i've opened up opened up 
Do you know what I mean? I've spoke about Fury negatively enough. I don't mean, you know, I like I like Fury. I used to love Fury, but over the last few years, I've really got sick and tired of him. Um, and I actually think he's one of the main culprits for holding up the heavyweight division. I really do now. I think he actually has not really done much in the heavyweight division at all. He's certainly not done as much as Joshua. And that's, that's my point. Although... I don't like his style. I, I'm starting to respect Joshua a lot more these days. And I'm hoping that this ego drop, you know, when you stop this ego, this persona, hoping um, that it, it makes, that it brings him out and, and brings some aggression back and brings out, you know, there's this thing called um, outcome independence that's really important in most aspects of everyone's life. People don't take it on enough. Outcome independence is when you essentially go into the ring. Now, this is applied to anything. Um, it's very similar to me playing piano. If you don't know, I play piano. And um, it's very much, if I create a song, a drum and bass song, I'm out, if I go into it and I'm outcome independent, okay, when I start the piece, I don't have any ideas what I'm going to write. I've got no care in the world what the outcome is, outcome independent. You're independent from the outcome, okay? I don't care what the finished result is going to be. I just go with the flow. I improvise, I play, and I learn, I create something, and that's outcome independence. Now, in boxing, it's the same thing. You go into the ring, you don't care if you win, you lose, you don't care if you draw, you don't care if you take a punch to the chin or not, you don't care about anything with the outcome, you're just independent from it. Now, at first you think you can't do that in sports, oh, what are you talking about, you can't do that. Yes, you can, there's many boxers that do it, and the reason why is because it's less stress. Um, if you can walk in there, you know, I don't, you know, a perfect boxer would probably be Emmanuel Augustus. Um, Mickey Ward might be a little bit of outcome independent, the way he boxed, he just, there was no emotion there essentially it was just like either you go down from one of my liver shots or you don't Do you know what I mean he's got that kind of it's almost dissipating away from the end result but anyway that's your psychology lesson for the day all right you've learned I, mean, I know you would have looked at him for a long time and thought you could beat him I and know. have that belief did anything change in that fight bodybuilders up dos is down he just looked like a flat slog <laughs> That just can't fight, and he says that bodybuilders can't fight, but he got smacked up by one. No, I always wanted to get in the. <laughs> I do like that. I think that's brilliant. He got smacked up by one. He basically, yeah. do you know what? Joshua has been wait. I'm telling you now, for the years and years that Fury has put Joshua down. For years and years, he said he's a big bodybuilder. He's a dosser. He can't do nothing. AJ has been waiting for that golden opportunity and he took it. I don't blame him. He took that golden opportunity by his hands. It was brilliant. You know, basically just saying that Ingardu sorted him out and he's a bodybuilder. So he looked like a fat slob. Oh, it's brilliant. Absolutely. And I'm on, his, I'm on his side for that one. Fury deserved that. Fury 100% deserved that because he's gone on and on and on for years. So yeah. He does a lot of talking. Calls me a bodybuilder and stuff, but I one of my other African pals who's a bodybuilder step in and smack him up for me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, good luck to him anyway. But he's got to stop running his mouth because it does come back and bite you. Who wins that fight then? Fury and Usyk? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm team Usyk anyway. Okay. Yeah, Why is that? Because, because there's respect between you. Yeah, respect, but you know, Fury said a lot of bad things about me, so I'm never going to roll. I'm never going to ride with someone that disrespects me. Mm. That's, that'll make me a lunatic. I'm pretty level headed. Yeah, totally agree. You know, why would why would he be going along with bloody um, Fury? Fury? All Fury's done is, is take the mickey out of him um, for years. It's not that I don't swear, people. It's just that I have to keep it clean for the algorithms. Um, yeah, I mean, he's literally been taking the old mickey out of old AJ for years and years. And she's like, oh, why is that? Because you got mutual respect? No. It's nothing to do with you, Sig. I don't like Fury. I think Fury's a big dosser. That's basically it. Well, I don't think he's a big dosser. I think he's a fat slob. So, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's a good interview. I, I like AJ. I'm starting to, you know, I've warmed to him. And um, I really hope AJ beats Waleen. 
Um, and so the, the last point I make is that the, the fight on March the 3rd next year, I think it was March 3rd we said, um, will only happen, obviously, if Wilder beats uh, Parker and Fury beats uh, Waleen. So as long as they do that, there's no reason why. Now, apparently the contracts are signed, um, but uh, I would not believe any of it. If I'm honest with you, until fight day, I don't believe none of it now. Uh, mainly because Fury is... Um, I've got learnt behaviours from Fury where I don't trust. Another side... This is your last bit of psychology. If you don't know what a learnt behaviour is, learnt behaviours happen when, um, like, you have something repetitively happen to you and you, and you learn from it. You know what I mean? You might... Um, every time you walk in a door, for instance, and the door's a bit stiff, you might do something with a handle. And then when you go to another door, you start doing it. It's just a learnt behaviour. And I, I've now had a learnt behaviour from Fury from all the crap over the years. When everyone, some, whenever anyone says a fight's going to happen, I should immediately shudder and just shut down. I'm like... Don't say, don't say the words. The contracts have been signed. Don't say them because they probably haven't. I can't believe anyone. Oh, that's kind of what it is. Yeah. So there's your second fight. This is what I mean. You come on this channel and you think, oh, I've got, you know, I'm, I'm signing up for boxing. You're going to watch boxing. Blah blah blah. Before you know it, you're banging down psychology degrees. Do you know what I mean? You ain't getting that on any other channel. Right. See you later.